Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Yale Climate Connection just put out a video critiquing the reliability of satellite temperature data, but let's take a look at what they use for their temperature measurements. Let's look at the reliability of land and sea temperature monitoring. First of all, land makes up only 29% of the Earth's surface. So, even if you had a million monitoring stations on land, you're missing out on 71% of the rest of the Earth, the oceans. Here are the temperature monitoring stations on land prior to 1860. And here are the temperature monitoring stations that the UK Met Office uses today. Very uneven coverage. In wealthy countries, these monitors are generally well maintained, but in places like Russia, which makes up 6% of the world's land mass, almost a fifth, or in the developing world, lack of money or changing governments mean some records are inconsistent with gaps of years or decades. Some stations are not maintained at all. Here's what a land temperature monitoring station looks like in the U.S. This may have been installed decades ago, but look what has sprouted up all around it. All kinds of heat emitting air conditioners, black asphalt paving, brick wall buildings that reflect heat, and not every station gets tender loving care. Another factor is the urban heat island. Cities retain heat from our daily activities of driving, using equipment, and power for lights. The corridors of tall buildings retain and reflect heat, so monitors in cities are known to register higher temperatures than those undisturbed in the country. Reliable records? Well, how about ocean temperatures? Ships have monitored temperatures at sea for years, but not with the scientific precision and not with complete coverage, as ships follow specific routes. In 2000, the Argo Ocean Drone Network was established, and now more than 3,000 of these monitoring robots roam the world's oceans, assessing temperatures in the top 2,000 meters of sea. But even a few thousand don't cover the entire surface. Not to mention, the ocean is as deep as Mount Everest is high. So the scientists who attack satellite data are the ones who work with these spotty records, and they call these more reliable? Okay, but let's look at what they do to find the global mean temperature. They average land and sea temperatures, and then they adjust them. So they're taking inconsistent monitoring points from sources that have incomplete geographical coverage of the Earth, where many monitors are compromised by being in hot spots of urban heat islands, then they average spotty land and sea temperatures, and then they adjust them. These results are deemed by the proponents of the Yale Climate Connection to be more reliable than the data from instrument readings of 40 years of satellite coverage that give full geospatial readings of the whole Earth, readings that are consistent with weather balloon references. Here's what has happened to carbon dioxide since Kyoto. The concentration has gone up, but the warming has not. And that's really the question. We all acknowledge that it's warmer. The question is, why? For Friends of Science, I'm Michelle Sterling.